Hey, what do you mean you're not going today? You can't possibly mean you're skipping Paige's wedding, right? No, that's exactly what I mean. I think it's best if I don't go in my current condition. I don't want to cause any trouble. Plus, Paige even said that she understands and just appreciates the thought. So, you're saying you're not going to her wedding just because you're pregnant? It's not just that. My due date is really close. The baby could come at any moment now. The doctor has also advised that I stay on bed rest to avoid any potential complications. The doctor just recommended that you take it easy, right? It's not like they said you absolutely must stay on bed rest no matter what happens, did they? Well, no. They didn't say it exactly like that, but... So what? You're gonna let what Paige said and what the doctor suggested be your excuses? In the end, you just don't want to go to the wedding, right? Isn't that what this is really about? That's not true at all. I do want to celebrate Paige's special day. But if I get sick or something happens because of my condition, you don't you think that that would cause more trouble? And honestly, I haven't been feeling all that well lately. Oh, stop it already. If you're not feeling well, it's only because you haven't been managing your health properly. Managing my health? Seriously? Ever since I got pregnant, you've been leaving all the housework to me. You're always too busy with work to help, and I've been doing all the cooking, cleaning, and laundry by myself. And yet you're talking about health management now? What are you complaining about? That's your job, isn't it? It's your responsibility to take care of the house and manage your health, all while fulfilling your role as an adult. Oh, really? And what about you? Isn't it your job to manage your health as well? You were out sick with a cold just last week. The month before that, you took time off because of an upset stomach. And before that, you missed work after getting bitten by some insect, remember? And you're lecturing me about health management? Shut up! Even if I do get sick sometimes, I still manage to keep working and bring in money, don't I? That's what matters. And besides, how was I supposed to prevent getting bitten by a weird bug? I had no control over that, and the swelling was awful. Okay, I'll admit that the bug bite incident was unfortunate. Don't get smart with me. You've been acting all high and mighty lately. Who do you think is providing for this household? Who's the one making sure you even have a place to live and food on the table? You always bring that up. But do you realize how outdated that way of thinking is? Hardly anyone talks like that anymore. It's not the 1950s. Oh, so now you're just going to brush it off because I hit a nerve, huh? Typical. Anyway, enough excuses. You're coming to the wedding and that's final. I'll call a taxi right now. Wait a second. I think my contractions are starting. And my water just broke. There's no way I can make it to the wedding now. I need to get to the hospital fast. Contractions? That's just like a bad stomach ache. Don't exaggerate. Today is my sister's wedding. You're coming even if you have to crawl there. Crawl? Are you even hearing yourself? This is the time when you're supposed to be worried about me, not your sister's wedding. Worried? You're pregnant. Of course contractions are going to happen eventually. It's no different from getting a cramp. Now stop making excuses and get ready. You're coming to the wedding. I honestly thought you'd understand if I told you I was in labor. But I guess even now you're putting your sister's wedding above me and our baby. Obviously, Paige is my one and only sister and today is the most important day of her life. What could possibly be more important than that? Of course the wedding takes priority, so get yourself ready and get in that taxi. I see. Fine, I'll go. Good. And don't be late. Tell the taxi driver to step on it if you have to. I don't care how fast they have to drive. Just make sure you're there. <sighs> hey, Fran. Cedric told me 
Bran will be here soon. But are you really able to come? Is your body okay? Yeah, I'm on my way. I thought I'd at least make an appearance, even if it's just for a short while. I really do want to celebrate with everyone. Plus, there's a hospital nearby, so I should be fine as long as I don't stay too long. No way. Cedric probably kept bugging you about it, right? Honestly, who even cares about some wedding for a sister-in-law? It's not like it's that important. What? How can you say something like that out loud so easily? I mean, if it were me, I'd find it super annoying. Honestly. And on top of that, you're in the final stages of pregnancy, right? It's totally crazy for you to push yourself just to attend. I'm sure Cedric kept nagging you, right? After all, I just got word that you weren't going to come a few moments ago. Yeah, Cedric seems to really care about you, though. When I told him that I started having contractions, he told me to come even if I had to crawl. Wait, what? You're having contractions? No, no. If that's the case, you really shouldn't come. What are we supposed to talk about with someone who's in labor? I think you're focusing on the wrong thing here. But anyway, I should apologize. The truth is, I lied about the contractions. Cedric was so insistent on me coming that I thought that if I told him I was in labor, he'd back off and let me stay home. So instead of letting up, he told you to come even if you had to crawl? That's insane. I can't believe he's my brother. I'm honestly tempted to cut ties with him. Why does he care about you so much? He seems to be really overprotective. Oh, please. There's no reason for it. He's just obsessed with me because I'm his little sister. He's got this weird image of himself as the perfect big brother. Telling you to crawl to the wedding is probably part of that fantasy. Like, oh, look at me. I'm so devoted to my sister that I'll even make extreme demands for her. And that's how he thinks. I see. Honestly, he's been acting jealous of my fiancé, and he keeps harassing me about it. It's seriously creepy the way he behaves. Wait, he's doing things like that too? That's really disturbing. Fran, since you're already heading to the hospital, what do you think about actually showing up to the wedding crawling? You know, like Cedric wanted. Excuse me? You're fed up with him, aren't you? Let's show everyone how messed up Cedric really is. It's time people knew. But if I actually showed up crawling, wouldn't that make me the crazy one too? Every battle requires some level of sacrifice. And besides, I'm sick of him being all over me too, so I'd appreciate it. Wait, how are you sacrificing anything in this plan? Look, you have to do something drastic. Cedric has a great public image, and even our relatives think highly of him. He's known as the caring, devoted older brother, and he's even giving a speech at the wedding. I, for one, refuse to sit through that speech. The more I hear about this, the more it sounds like you're the one benefiting from this whole plan. Well, what about you? Do you really plan on staying married to Cedric? This is the guy who told his wife, who claimed to be in labor, to crawl to his sister's wedding. Is that someone you want to spend your life with? You're right. I have been thinking about leaving him. Then, you know what you have to do. Let's expose him for the controlling maniac he is. Come on, Fran. It's the perfect opportunity. Hmm. Hey, what the hell do you think you're doing? Well, you're the one who said, come even if you have to crawl. So, I actually crawled here. Don't give me that! Who the hell actually crawls to a wedding? Thanks to you, everything's turned into a huge commotion! But you told me to come no matter what, so I did just as you said. You're saying that again, damn it! Now everyone's calling me a crazy guy who made his pregnant wife crawl to the wedding! Well, isn't that exactly what happened? I mean, you did say that, didn't you? It seems like you finally realize just how crazy that sounds. Damn it! This is such a mess! I still have to give my speech soon! All I did was follow your order, Cedric. You! You did this on purpose, didn't you? You crawled here to make me look like some kind of maniac! That was your plan all along, wasn't it? 
There's no making you look like anything. You're a maniac, Cedric. That's just the truth. Well, if I'm a maniac, then you're just as crazy crawling all the way here like that. Don't you have any shame? Shame? You're the one who told your nine months pregnant wife to crawl to your sister's wedding. If anyone should be ashamed, it's you. So this was your way of getting back at me, wasn't it? Damn it, the whole venue is still buzzing about what just happened. Everyone's staring at me with these cold, judgmental eyes. So it looks like it was a success then? A success? Are you out of your mind? With a stunt like this, you're going to end up being looked down on just as much as me. Our family is definitely going to hate you now. Are you really okay with that? Yeah, that's fine. Because after this, I'm not going to be a part of this family anymore. What? What are you talking about? Once I divorce you, I won't have to deal with your family or anyone else here ever again. So it doesn't really matter to me what they think. Divorce? You you can't be serious. Of course I am. Think about it, Cedric. Do you honestly believe you've been a good husband? Deep down, you know the answer. Look, I get it. You're mad at me because of what happened today. But you have to understand, to me, family is everything. I'll always prioritize family above all else. I know you didn't grow up with a family, so maybe you don't get that. Wow. I can't believe you actually just said that. To tell someone who lost their parents at a young age that they don't understand the value of family? That's incredibly low, even for you. Well, if you had family, then maybe you'd get where I'm coming from. But no, you don't, so you're just being selfish. Wanting a divorce over something like this, that's just you being immature. Call it whatever you want. I don't care. I'm divorcing you, Cedric. That's all there is to it. You've got to be kidding me. There's no way I'm letting you do that. You're pregnant with my child. You think I'm just going to let you walk away? I'll raise this baby on my own. With all the things you've said and done, I'm sure I'll get custody without any issues. You... <sighs> no, fine. You know what? I'll prove to everyone that I'm not the bad guy here. I still have my speech to give. I'll tell everyone that this whole act of yours crawling here was just a plan to make me look bad. They'll believe me. I've always had their trust. You really are something else, Cedric. No, you're the one who's disgusting. You've ruined Paige's wedding just to get back at me. I'm going to expose your selfish nature in front of everyone. Just wait. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, hey, what was that announcement just now? At the bride's request, the family speech has been assigned to you, the sister-in-law? What's going on? It's exactly as it sounds. The speech that was supposed to be yours is now mine to give. I'll be taking care of it. What? You must have done something. Did you threaten Paige or something? Threaten her? That's absurd. I didn't do anything of the sort. If anything, it feels like I'm the one being threatened by Paige. What do you mean by that? Explain yourself. I mean, I didn't know about this either until that announcement just now. This whole thing is news to me too. But after a public broadcast like that, what choice do I have? I can't just refuse in front of everyone now, can I? It's basically like I'm being forced, no, threatened into doing it. But why would Paige ask you to do the speech instead of me? I'm her brother, her only brother. I know Paige wanted me to give that speech more than anything. I'm her family after all. Are you sure about that? Because from where I'm standing, it seems like Paige might have a different opinion. What are you talking about? What do you know about Paige that I don't? I'm her brother. I've known her all my life. Exactly. You've known her all your life, and yet you still don't understand her at all. What the hell do you mean by that? I'm her family. Of course I know her better than anyone else. <laughs> do you, though? 
You say you're her family, but have you actually taken the time to understand her needs? Her feelings? I doubt that. Maybe Paige isn't as happy with you as you think she is. Why else would she hand the speech over to me at the last minute like this? You've got no idea what you're talking about. Paige would never betray me like that. I'm her brother, her only brother. And she knows how important this day is to me. She'd never take that speech away from me without a good reason. Well, if you're so sure about that, why don't you go ask her yourself? If you truly believe that you're the one who should be making the speech and that Paige had no good reason to change your mind, then go and talk to her. See what she says. You bet I will. I don't need you to tell me that. I'll go find her right now and we'll get to the bottom of this. Hey, Paige, what was that announcement all about earlier? I mean, saying that Fran is going to give the speech instead of me? Isn't that a bit strange? Strange? What exactly is strange about it? Well, I mean, Fran isn't related to you by blood, right? In situations like this, it's supposed to be the actual brother, me, who gives the speech. That's the proper way things should go, don't you think? This is my wedding, Cedric. Shouldn't I be the one who decides who gets to speak? Okay, fine, but Paige, are you seriously saying you really want Fran to give the speech? Is that what you truly want? Of course. Why else would I have made that decision? Paige, wait a minute. Is someone threatening you? If someone is forcing you into this, just tell me and I'll protect you. You know I will. Threatening me? No one's threatening me. Jeez, you're so over the top. And you know what, Cedric? You're really creepy. What? You're always sticking your nose into my business. It's annoying. Like, seriously, with this wedding, you've been giving your two cents about everything. You've been absolutely insufferable. Paige, what's gotten into you? Oh, don't act all innocent. I know about the private investigator you hired to spy on my fiancé. Yeah, that's right. I know everything. Honestly, it's beyond creepy. But... I just wanted to protect you! I've been looking out for you, Paige! That's all I've ever tried to do! Protect me? You're delusional. Seriously, what is with you? It's just gross. You're obsessed. Wait. Are you sure someone's not putting you up to this? Please, Paige, if someone is pressuring you, just say the word. I'll deal with them for you. No one's putting me up to anything, Cedric. This is all me. Get a grip and face reality. But if that's really how you feel, you should have told me earlier, right? You never said anything like this before. You never acted this way towards me before either. Ugh. I didn't say anything because it was just too much of a hassle. And besides, everyone in the family seems to think you're this perfect, caring brother. It would have been a nightmare to deal with all the drama if I'd called you out on your nonsense earlier. I don't believe you! That can't be how you really feel! Deep down, I know you care about me. You've always looked up to me. I'm your big brother! Wow. That's terrifying. You're literally just making stuff up at this point. I do not look up to you, Cedric. You're just a nuisance, plain and simple. Nuisance? That's not true. I've always cared for you, Paige. I've always put your well-being first. I've done everything for you. Please, do you seriously think just saying you care about me makes up for all the things you've done? If you actually cared about me, you wouldn't be doing all these things I hate. So just stop. But I, I've only ever tried to... Enough already, Cedric. If you really cared, you'd respect my choices. And right now, my choice is for Fran to give the speech. Got it? How? How can you just dismiss me like this, Paige? After everything we've been through as siblings, you're really choosing Fran over me? Yes, Cedric, I am. And that's final. So either deal with it or just leave. Honestly, you're ruining the day for me. You've been suffocating this whole time. 
But I'm your brother. Doesn't that mean anything to you? All I've ever done was try to protect you, try to keep you safe. Cedric, listen to me. I don't need or want your protection. What I need is for you to stop meddling in my life. The spying on my fiancé? The constant hovering? It's too much. Do you even realize how much you're overstepping? I was just looking out for you. I was doing what any good brother would do. A good brother doesn't hire private investigators to tail their sister's fiancé. That's not being protective. That's being invasive. And I'm done putting up with it. So go ahead. Storm off if you want. But this is my wedding and I get to decide who speaks. Paige! I only ever wanted the best for you. Then stop making this about you. This is my day, Cedric, not yours. Let me enjoy it without all your drama, okay? I don't understand! After everything I've done, you're really gonna shut me out? I've been wanting to shut you out for a long time now. Today just gave me the perfect excuse. So yeah, Cedric, this is me telling you, enough is enough. I can't believe this! Well, believe it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a wedding to enjoy. Hey, don't you think that speech was a bit much? You went too far! Exposing our text messages like that, how is that fair? Those were personal, private conversations, you know. Personal? Well, isn't that the whole point of a family speech, to talk about personal things? Besides, I had to explain why the speech was suddenly switched over to me in the first place. And, well, I started having fun while doing it. Before I knew it, I was spilling all kinds of things. Yeah, well, thanks to you, I can't even show my face there anymore! Do you realize how many people from my company were there? Of course. You're the one who invited them all, remember? My own family won't even speak to me now. I disappeared from the wedding and not a single person has tried to reach out to me. No one cares. Guess your true colors finally showed, huh? Honestly, I'm glad. Now everyone knows just how messed up you are. They also know how crazy you are, too. You didn't exactly come out looking great, either. Damn it, what am I supposed to do now? Simple. Just pay me the alimony you owe, and we'll be done. Wait, what? I've got plenty of evidence of how you treated me, Cedric. I've been thinking of making it all public and taking you to court over it. Well, hold on. You're not serious, are you? You're really gonna kick me when I'm already down? I think the one who's about to kick you down even further is Paige, not me. Seems like she's got a lot of dirt on you. Things you probably didn't think she'd ever find out. Wait, what are you talking about? Oh, didn't you know? She's planning to come out with all the proof she has against you. Stuff like you hiring a private investigator to follow her fiancé around, harassing him. Not to mention the fact that you even hired women to flirt with him trying to get him to cheat. No, that can't be. She knows about all that, but, uh, but I let them get married in the end, didn't I? I could have stopped it, but I didn't. Doesn't that count for something? Maybe that whole holier-than-thou attitude of yours is probably what Paige hated the most about you. Now that everyone in the family is already looking at you with suspicion thanks to my speech, she's ready to unleash all that evidence she's got. That'll be the real finishing blow. It's over. Everything is over. Yeah, it's over. You can stop pretending now. Good job in making it this far. Fran, please don't abandon me, okay? I'll apologize for everything I've done, I swear. I'll change, I promise. Just give me another chance, please. Wow, how pathetic. You know, I'm really glad I crawled my way over here after all. Thanks, Cedric. Huh? Well, what are you talking about? I really mean it. Thanks for telling me to crawl my way over to this wedding. Because of that, I got the chance to ruin you completely. <laughs> Fran, you really pulled it off. I never expected it to go this smoothly. 
Yeah, me neither. I owe it all to you, thank you. No, no, I didn't do anything. Honestly, when I said, why don't you just come crawling over, I was just joking. I mean, you're actually in your third trimester. Huh? But it's so great that everything went so well. We seem to have secured a pretty decent amount of compensation, and I'm genuinely grateful. You're really being quite opportunistic, aren't you? But I had fun too, so thank you. Just remember, this is all hindsight, okay? I mean, think about it. When we first started this, there were so many uncertainties. I never imagined to be standing here after all that chaos, feeling like we actually achieved something significant. It's like, despite all the risk, we managed to come out on top. Right? And I was so nervous at first, wondering how everyone would react. But now, looking back, it feels almost exhilarating. We turn the situation around in our favor. Exactly. It's like we transformed all that tension into something positive. I couldn't have done it without your support, honestly. I really appreciate your help. Oh, come on. You know I was just along for the ride. But still, it's nice to hear that. I guess we make a pretty good team after all. <laughs> for sure. Here's to more unexpected victories in the future. After the divorce with me was finalized, Cedric found himself in a difficult situation. He had to pay substantial alimony to both me and Paige, his fiancée, which left him financially destitute. He became utterly broke, with nothing to his name. The financial burden of supporting two households took a significant toll on him, and it seems that, due to the recent events surrounding our separation, he also decided to resign voluntarily from his job. Now. In what appears to be an act of desperation, he has left town, almost as if he were fleeing in the night, and is currently living in a cheap apartment, away from the life he once knew. I often find myself contemplating how he feels about his current circumstances. He has not only lost me, but has also been completely shunned by his family, including my sister and all our relatives. What kind of emotions must he be grappling with as he navigates through this drastic change in his life? Is he feeling regret over his choices, or is he perhaps trying to convince himself that he's better off without any of us? It's hard to say what goes through a person's mind when they hit rock bottom, but I can imagine that it is a mix of confusion, anger, and possibly some sense of freedom, even if it's short-lived. The situation has taken a toll on everyone involved, and it's hard to fathom how he copes with the enormity of what has happened. To have gone from being engaged and planning a future with someone to living in solitude and isolation is a drastic transformation. One day, he was living a life filled with promise, and the next he was stripped of that, forced to confront the consequences of his actions. I can only imagine the weight of that realization. How does one pick up the pieces after such a public and painful fallout? On the other hand, this experience has brought Paige and me closer. We have developed a strong friendship through these events, which has been a silver lining in this otherwise difficult situation. Our bond has deepened significantly. We've moved beyond the initial stages of our relationship and have come to support each other in meaningful ways. Through the shared experience of navigating the aftermath of Cedric's choices, we have forged a connection that is both comforting and empowering. Paige has this intriguing personality, that I find both confusing and comforting at the same time. I often wonder if she is simply carefree or if there's a deeper cunning to her character. Regardless, there's a sense of reliability I feel when I'm with her. It's almost like having a partner in crime, someone with whom I can share my thoughts and feelings openly. Together, we navigate the ups and downs of life, sharing both laughter and tears as we reflect on our experiences. Meanwhile, I'm doing my best to raise our child on my own. It's a challenging yet rewarding journey that I embrace wholeheartedly. Every day brings new trials and triumphs, but with the support of my family and Paige, I am managing to create a nurturing environment for my child. The love and care I put into raising my little one are my top priorities, and I am determined to provide a stable and happy home. There are moments when the weight of single parenthood feels overwhelming. The responsibilities of caring for a newborn are immense. I find myself juggling countless tasks, from sleepless nights to diaper changes, and from preparing meals to soothing cries. 
Yet, in those quiet moments, when my child smiles or falls asleep in my arms, I feel a profound sense of joy and fulfillment that makes all the struggles worthwhile. Those smiles are like little rays of sunshine that brighten even the darkest days. Family has been an invaluable source of support during this time. They lend a helping hand when I'm in need, providing encouragement and respite. Whether it's my parents coming over to help with the baby or a close friend offering to babysit so I can have some time for myself, these gestures mean the world to me. Their support reminds me that I am not alone in this journey. I have a network of people who genuinely care and want to help me succeed as a parent. Page 2 has been incredibly supportive. Our friendship has blossomed into something truly special. We often share our thoughts about our respective journeys, and I appreciate how she listens without judgment. She brings a sense of lightness to my life, reminding me that it's okay to have fun and enjoy the little things amidst the chaos. Sometimes, we indulge in simple pleasures, like watching movies together or sharing a meal while discussing our hopes for the future. Those moments of laughter and connection mean so much to me. Our outings together have become a cherished routine. Sometimes, we take the baby for strolls in the park, chatting about everything from our hopes and dreams to our fears and doubts. It's during these moments that I realize how fortunate I am to have someone like her by my side. The bond we share not only helps me cope with my challenges, but also fills my life with joy and companionship. Despite the hardships we face, I find myself reflecting on the beauty of life. I cherish the precious moments with my child, the laughter shared with friends, and the warmth of family. Each day is an opportunity for growth and connection, and I strive to make the most of it. There are days when the challenges seem insurmountable, but I remind myself that every struggle is a stepping stone toward a brighter future. As I navigate this new chapter of my life, I am learning to embrace the uncertainties. The challenges may be daunting, but they also pave the way for new beginnings. I am grateful for the lessons I've learned through this journey, as they have shaped me into a stronger, more resilient person. I recognize that personal growth often comes from overcoming adversity, and I am committed to embracing that growth with open arms. In the end, I understand that life is not just about the obstacles we face, but how we respond to them. I am committed to raising my child with love, compassion, and strength, ensuring that they grow up in a supportive environment. I want to instill values of kindness and resilience in my child so that they can navigate their own challenges with grace. As for Cedric, I hope he finds his way too. Perhaps one day he will reflect on his actions and recognize the consequences they have brought upon him. Life can be unforgiving, but it also offers opportunities for redemption. Only time will tell how he chooses to navigate this new path. I genuinely hope that he learns from this experience and finds a way to rebuild his life, even if it means doing so without me or our shared dreams. In the meantime, I will continue to embrace the love and support around me, cherishing every moment with my child and nurturing the friendships that have blossomed in the wake of adversity. Life may not be what I initially envisioned, but I am determined to make it beautiful in its own right. I believe that happiness is not a destination, but a journey, and I am committed to finding joy in the everyday moments that make life special. As I reflect on this journey, I feel a renewed sense of hope. The road ahead may be uncertain, but I am ready to face whatever comes my way. I have learned to trust in my ability to adapt and thrive, even in the face of challenges. With my child by my side and the support of my friends and family, I know I can create a life filled with love, laughter, and purpose. In conclusion, while Cedric may have chosen a path that led to his downfall, I am choosing a path of resilience and hope. I refuse to let his actions define my future or the future of my child. Instead, I will continue to build a life that reflects my values and aspirations. I will strive to be the best parent I can be and create a loving home that fosters growth and happiness. Life is full of unexpected twists and turns, and I am ready to embrace them all with an open heart.